Hello there my fellow sim rig racers and welcome to today's video and we're moving on with our series about touring cars. We started off with a look at the 1992 British touring car season when the new super touring regulations were formalised and it was the first real season running to those uh, rules and regs and now we're going to move on but just a couple of years this time round and we're going to move up to 1994 as this was the year that was a, a little contentious and it was all about wings yes that's right we're going to take a look at the Alfa Romeo and their uh, interpretation of what was legal and what wasn't now at the beginning of uh, 94 manufacturers had to produce two and a half thousand road going versions so they kept the cars pretty standard from the outside they looked like their showroom counterparts they were just you know tuned up but then Alpha decided to come along and they wanted to introduce aerodynamics wings and splitters which ultimately gave them an advantage now it wasn't strictly by the rules a little loophole was found and they did produce a road going version which was the 155 Silverstone but it came with all the wings and the splitters as in the boot that could be fitted either by the dealer or the customer it didn't actually come from the factory in that spec now it wasn't against the rules it was more like against the spirit of the rules but they turned up but they withheld a little crucial element a little surprise for the field was the fact that the splitter and the rear wing was extendable and so they could set it up Per course so they could move the front splitter out and they could move the rear wing up depending on what type of circuit and what type of conditions they were running under of course they just dominated so the four team lodged a complaint and it all came to a head at Alton Park where they were you know told that they couldn't e extend the wings and they had to race them in the fixed position but even then it was under protest well they pulled out they said no we're not going to race so they went home so the rule makers quickly came to a compromise discussion and they set a rule that began on the 1st of July 1994 now this meant that they could carry on running with the wings but they had to be in the retracted position their lowest least aerodynamic settings but there was no rule to say that other teams couldn't now introduce a wing, which is exactly what uh, Renault and BMW did for that first race after the 1st of July at Silverstone. This took away the edge that uh, the Alfa Romeo team had and BMW went on to dominate. But because of the head start Alfa had with Tarquini behind the wheel, they still wrapped up the championship that year and it really did sort of set the tone for the, uh, the the technical and spending revolution that then happened over the preceding years right up until the end of the 90s. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Tarquini's Alpha for that uh, Silverstone round and we're going to see just how different the cars felt with aerodynamics as basic as they were at that time. And we're going to see compare how it felt using Race 07 and the brilliant Andreas FSC mod to see how it compared with the non-winged, non-aerodynamic 1992 BMW we drove in the previous video. So come and join me after the intro, out on track, and let's have some good old touring car fun. So here we are on the grid here at a slightly overcast Silverstone. As we do a beautiful grid walk, we look at all the Fours, the Renaults, the Vauxhalls, the Nissans, the Toyotas, BMWs. What a grid! What a lineup uh, British touring cars had manufacturer-wise in the 90s. Fantastic! A little bit of everything and anything. We are going to be at the back of the grid in our winged Alpha, as I assume the role of the mighty Tarquini, the 94 champion winner. Okay, we should have a more realistic field to pass as well. I've set the AI up so we don't have four of any one driver. Oh, 
not a bad start. Let's see, let's see. Let's just uh, take a steady first lap. We've got 10 minutes. It's always a little chaotic. Be that real or virtual. Ooh, 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 ooh. We're just picking off a few of the back markers here. We'll get a st stiffer battle as we get up the grid there a bit. Bit of understeer, cold tyres. You'll notice the mirrors are a little bit out. Not quite sure why that is. Had a little play around with some of the settings, but... Ooh, couldn't really find a reason why, but never mind. We should be looking forward and not behind. And we're coming across BMW. Well, more... Than, oh, dear. Of course, Steve Soper knows all about being shunted up the back end. Just search YouTube for uh, Steve Soper and John Cleland. In we come. Look, ah, we've got him. We'll have our place back. Thank you very much. Right, so we've got some basic aerodynamics. Front splitter which others haven't got, and a rear wing, which a lot of other cars after the July ruling rocked up to Silverstone with. Now, we are in race 07, 15 year old title. But there, there is a difference. The front end feels sharper, it's more positive. Getting harried here by my own teammate. And I found under braking, the car is less uh, pitch sensitive now. Before, under heavy braking, I could feel the rear end go really light. I'm not suffering that same problem now. The car feels more flat, more level. Cornering speeds, the entry uh, specifically is higher, it's faster. Oh, on the brakes. Tell you what you can be now is more aggressive with your inputs. This reminds me more of the you know later touring cars where you see drivers flicking in between the two pedals, just mashing one or the other. Lots of rapid steering movement because you've got the aerodynamics underneath you. Pinging the car to the track, creating a far more stable platform so you can take more liberties, you can be more aggressive because there's less sliding. See, look at that, I can really tuck that front end in. There's Tim Harvey, he was, of course, the 1992 champion. We raced his car in the last video. There'll be a link in the description to that. Oh, everybody's locking up. Here we are, look. There's Andy Rouse in the Ford, the team that um, protested the uh, Alphas. And instigated the rule change. He even bought an Alpha 155 Silverstone and brought it to the hearing to prove that the cars didn't come with all the wings on. When manufacturers get involved in a sport, 
money and politics start to ramp up. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's just the way it goes. Oh, I was going to take him there, but it's just wasn't quite early enough on the brakes to give me enough overlap. Oh, these things are so much, you know, so much more rewarding to drive. I know we've lost that H pattern box, so you're not, you know, it's not quite so much input there, but having the sequential box is just one less thing to worry about. All you need to do now is just focus on that throttle and steering inputs. Whoa, we're going to come under, look, round the <laughs> double overtake, and here we are, look, we're up against the bricks. Oh, look at that, fantastic. you got to love, you, you got to love touring cars. Alpha rocked up with a load of wings. <laughs> We've got, what, nearly... What, 10 different manufacturers? A Volvo rock up with an estate car. I just love it. Oh, listen. Oh, we're right on the edge here. <laughs> oh, I just love how you can lean on the cars. Oh, look at that, look. Oh, I'm just helping you around the corner, mate. I can't wait until we uh, take a look at the uh, late 90s when we look at the pinnacle of manufacturer spending and technology. We're going to showcase a different sim racing title for that. We were going to be in the Fury mod, uh, touring car mod for GTR2 for this, but we had a sound issue with the Alpha that I couldn't get on top of. So that's why we're back in Race 07 for this one with Andrea FSC's mod. Of course, there'll be a link in the description. Right. Come on in, should we have a blast? Oh, loving this, loving, loving, loving this. Right. We've got a little bit of... Ooh, ooh, ooh. The Volvos are attacking. Right, so it's me and Alan Menu. Two cars with wings. This was the first round that the uh, Renault ran with their wing. Ooh. Oh, yeah. But although we've got aerodynamics and we've got the wings, what we don't have is ABS or traction control. So you have to be careful with the front wheel drives because you can overpower. He's covering the inside line. Just take it steady. Can I pitch it down? Oh, rubbed alongside him. Right. Let's build a gap. Come on. Throw it in. And it sticks. Front wheels are scrabbling for traction. So I'm asking too much of them, really. Oh, on the brakes. Oh, a little bit too late there. 
carried a bit too much speed in, but how stable was that? Before then, the cars would have pitched, the back end would have come round on me. But I haven't got to worry about that anymore. Are we going to take a much deserved race win here at Silverstone? In real life, the um, it was the BMW that took the win. Thank you, yes. Like I say, whoops, a daisy. I said, oh, dearie me. As soon as the AI get back in control, it all goes wrong. But as I say, in real life, the BMW did win that first race. But we smashed it. We've come through last to first. Ah, oh, brilliant, loved it. Well, I hope you joined my ever so brief look at um, the 1994 touring car season and it's uh, wings and splitters and there we go at the top of the list fantastic brilliant um, links to all the uh, pictures and clips and more details about the season have a look in the description everything all the credits all the links all the information that I've got will all be in there so you can go and have a really in-depth look and read about uh, the 94 season uh in the meantime why don't you check out some of my other videos specifically the first video in the series covering the 92 season when the super touring rules became a real thing and uh in the meantime enjoy your sim racing i think i'm gonna have another little race on here and i'll uh, See you out on track. Bye-bye.